So here is a little walk around of the 1975 FJ40 Land Cruiser with a 4.5 liter Cummins diesel. Um, the story behind this cruiser is it was purchased from the second owner um, it had 70 actually you know what I don't remember it's 70 something thousand miles original miles on it had the 2F engine um, original PTO 4 speed it was a great little running truck and for all the purists out there it was kind of fun to rip all this original equipment out of this really clean original cruiser and tweak it to the point that it is now. The fun twist to it all is in the near future I have a what to date seems to be the oldest existing 1961 FJ40 that's the oldest known to exist to date I and um, I'm going to be doing a full frame off restoration original numbers matching everything I can so it'll it'll earn my brownie points back with all the purists out there so here it is this is the original beige paint I'll give you a look inside I'm sure the engine compartments where we really want to be but I'll give you a quick preview because this cruiser will be stripped down after our mechanical proving stage is over um, we're gonna rip everything apart and do the cosmetic part of the build. We haven't figured a color yet, but it may be either the original beige or um, the other option is we're looking at uh, like a Hershey Brown. So the idea is to try to make it look bone stock original and of course have what lies beneath under the hood, the big twist to the whole uh, build process. So we have original steel rally wheels that are going to be going on this. These white steel wheels are be, will be coming off at some point. I have original, brand new original hubcaps. So they're powder coated light gray with the uh, chrome hubcaps. This is the uh, back. We found an original roll bar and the seats are actually upholstered to match the front for now. So they look pretty sharp. Just a rubber floor mat, but this is a super solid cruiser. There's very little rust in this thing. It's mostly, I'd say almost all of it's just minor surface rust. Ambulance doors, of course. I'm kind of a fan of the ambulance doors on hard top cruisers. Kind of a pain if you plan to take your top off, but the rear tank is a Manafree tank. Two and a half inch lift, Skyjacker soft ride springs. I built custom shackles. Gained another inch and a half, so they're two and a half and inch and a half collectively. Two and a half leaf springs, of course, and one and a half inch lift shackles. The diamond plate is going to be coming off of the door panels. We have uh, other door panels that we're going to be using. Has a vintage air heating and AC. This is uh, the twin stick shifter setup. It's running an NV4500 five speed transmission with the uh, older three speed transfer case, Toyota Land Cruiser transfer case, and then I installed a twin stick shifter. It turned out nice. Had to redo the trans tunnel. Built a custom seat frame for the 2005 Tahoe power seats. They're nice. They're a big comfy seat. The tilt column came from uh, Summit Racing. It's just a universal tilt column. The dash is actually going to get filled before when we do the paint stage and I'm going to reconfigure all the switches and levers and everything. 
So right now all the gray spots you see were holes that had to be filled. Just threw a little primer on them for the time being. Here's the exhaust system. Comes out through the outside of the frame. Runs down, it's a MagnaFlow muffler. The frame has actually already been sandblasted and sprayed in a undercoating. So the frame's all clean and ready to go. So when we pull the body off, all the drivetrain's gonna stay. Just a clean stock little cruiser ARB front bumper. I had to build a special little bracket set up for the winch because where it mounts on the ARB bumper, I have a power steering unit that I set up in here and there was no clearance so I had to build a custom bracket for that. There's a Chevy one ton tie rod end. Again the custom front shackles are made out of half inch, this is half inch thick by two inch wide flat stock, grade eight bolts, new polyurethane bushings. Front axle's all been rebuilt, all new bearings and seals and so forth. And now for the fun part. So here it is. 4.5 liter Cummins diesel. We had a lot of debate going back and forth between doing a 4BT Cummins over a brand new crate 2013 4.5 liter. This engine was originally set up more for agriculture use, generators, pumps, that kind of thing. And there's a lot that goes into making these things work with a standard automotive drivetrain transmission as far as that goes. It has an SAE3 tail housing which makes it a little different. Um, had a custom turbo built, Borg Warner Turbo. Intercooler was built specific for that little location. As you can see there is very little room. In the past I've built B diesel uh, BJ40 cruisers where I slotted the radiator core support in the front, notched it where on either end the ducts would go in, one on the exhaust, one on the intake, and the radiator would fit directly behind that. But as you can see there is very little room back here and there is nothing in the front where there's a vintage air um, condenser that goes on the front of the radiator so that is not an option. This is an electronically controlled 185 I believe electronically controlled electric fan so it comes on shuts off once it gets back down to operating temperature. For the time being this is set up to where I have an additional fan that goes over the intercooler, of course, because there's no airflow through it directly through the um, driving air. This is set up to turn on when it hits 185 degrees. In the future, I plan to change that. I want to run a intake air temp so that it's monitoring off of the intake air temp as opposed to the engine temp. Um, it's, I'm not completely happy with it, but I haven't found the right intake air temp sensor sending unit to use yet, but that will change at some point. I built a little stainless steel heat shroud to cover up the custom built at a steed speed shop up in Canada. Custom built the CNC machined exhaust manifold that from past, I don't know, trials or whatever, the they run a roughly about 100 degrees lower through the EGTs over the band than a stock manifold would. A lot better flow characteristics. And this thing does run super cool. The intake, or the, excuse me, the exhaust temperature. Driving around town, it's about 750 degrees. Under a full grade, under power, with boost, everything. It, it really barely gets close to about 1100. It stays right around 1000 degrees. The downpipe, I don't know if I can get a shot of it, but the downpipe, it's back in there. We're not going to get a very good picture of it. 
The downpipe is a four inch mandrel bent downpipe that basically telescopes down into a three and a half inch, then finally a three inch to the muffler, the Magnaflow muffler. And in order to have enough clearance to get the tailpipe out the back, it is down to a two and a half inch, but the two and a half inch flow is more than sufficient and it runs phenomenal where it's at. That's all stainless steel, mandrel bent intake ducting with silicone couplers. Of course, we're a diesel now, so um, we have no vacuum pump on this system. It is all hydro boost. There is a story behind the power steering pump that I'm not going to get into, but it's a lot of custom work to make it work with this 4.5 liter. They don't have a power steering pump that is a direct unit that will bolt on, so we had to work with a few shops to get the right reverse rotation pump and it just goes on forever. So anyway, long story short, here is a Hydro Boost brake unit. It is a disc, disc master cylinder remote reservoir, which goes down into a Saginaw pump, which is mounted down there on the engine. A little aluminum reservoir for the radiator. And here is a starting procedure. When the key is turned on, that is a stop engine light. When it turns off, it's ready to fire. On the opposite side, we have the check engine light. So if something is to go wrong, that light will come on. It originally turns on when you turn the ignition key on, then turns off. clear shot but that is the fly-by-wire throttle pedal this is a little custom setup boost gauge and pyrometer this little switch right here is a afterthought <laughs> we're gonna find out what kind of customer service Summit Racing has but after we actually ins I installed this tilt steering column the turn signals were not working properly and it was all inside the column so I had to set up this little jimmy rig turn signal switch so we had signals while we were testing it when we rip the body back off that steering column is going to come out and hopefully Summit does a good job honoring this faulty part that plug right there is also a temporary setup. It's a Deutsch plug for setting up um, engine diagnostics. You can go in and check parameters and adjust, do minor adjustments. And of course there would be a horn button there, but because I was fighting the... And the other thing that wasn't working is a horn. So neither the horn or the turn signals would work. And I was asked when I first called them if I was certain I wired it up properly. And I said, well, I think I've got a decent idea of, decent understanding of wiring. I think I got it right. So we'll see. I may send them this video just as a reference as to whether or not they trust my judgment that it's a faulty column. <laughs> and these are, again, the Power Tahoe seats. I'm... I tend to make these kind of a common seat for a lot of the cruisers that I've built over the years. 
it's just a basic little ground and power source. Nothing cute and fancy right now because again most of this is all coming back apart and we have a whole brand new wiring harness that will be going in it right now. I set up the electrical just for the ECU for the engine and the rest of the system is a stock original wiring harness which is again all going to come out and be changed. These seats are a little bit worn. They're not bad but they again we just pulled them out of a Tahoe and the color of them is nice so we match the back seats. These may get redone. They're probably going to end up ripping at some point. They always do and it's got kind of a little crack right here. A little split but restoration is kind of the name of what I like. So in closing I just would like to say I appreciate everybody's support on these truck builds. They're a lot of fun. There's some challenges of course but it always makes it worth worthwhile when I get a lot of positive feedback and again be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It'll give you automatic updates to stages of build projects that I work on and I, I apologize ahead of time but if anybody does ask technical questions more likely than not I'm not going to respond I just don't have time to answer everybody's questions so you know if you really want to do this then you got to put in the time to research and make it happen so otherwise again I appreciate the support stay tuned for the next stage of this build it's actually not going to be for another two months until we put this under the some road conditions to get any little hiccups worked out of it. But about two months from now we'll be stripping this old girl down and making her quite the little gem. So stay tuned. A lot of new projects. Thank you again for your support. So you remember which way is reverse, right? Yeah. <laughs> Go that way? Yeah, that way, yeah. You know, if you put it in first and low range, you could probably drive right through the shop. <laughs> Don't forget your seatbelt. <laughs>